following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. Here are Mickey Spagnola, Brian Broaddus, Rob Phillips, and Bill Jones. And it is a Tuesday here at the Star in Frisco, Texas, the SWBC Mortgage Studios. Bill Jones with Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, and Brian brought us as we turn the page and get set for Eagles Week. A day off for the players here. And the practices resume, of course, on Wednesday. And it's Eagles Week. And, uh, of course, a lot to get to with the Jets. Jerry Jones was just on the flagship station, 105.3, the fan in Dallas-Fort Worth talking about uh, his head coach as well as what happened in uh, Sunday's game against the Jets, the 24-22 loss. And I guess we can probably start with that. But first, uh, hello to everybody. How are you today? Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Very good. Very good. We also got the XFL draft going on right now. Brian brought us, this is what a nerd I am. I'm actually tracking (laughs) that draft. How, does, how do you like the pick so far? Landry Jones being your quarterback, you okay with that? It's that Oklahoma brings, guy. That brings it back to the Cowboys right off the bat because Landry Jones was named after Tom Landry. There you go. He grew up in New Mexico. There you go. He saw where uh, Lance Dunbar was drafted. By was he really? I he didn't, was haven't drafted. seen that. Yeah, he okay. was drafted. Yeah. yeah. All right. There so are some interesting names. Did the locals get anybody worth note? Well, Landry Jones was the the quarterback. They got him the, already, yeah, right? and he was the designated was quarterback. Assigned, their yeah. first yeah. round draft pick. With the fourth pick of the 2020, I guess, XFL draft. This is the skills portion of the draft. The Dallas Renegades select wide receiver Jeff Bidette from Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma. Oh, there's a common theme here. I'm <laughs> did, he, did, he, did he play there? <laughs> he did. He was actually a transfer from someplace. I can't remember where. He played one year there. Fast guy. Can really run. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Mm. And uh, So anyway, Christian Michael, uh, we had a cup of coffee here. Trey Williams, they were first-round draft picks as sure. well. There you go. So anyway, there's your XFL draft update. We'll keep you posted as the day goes along. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jerry on the radio. He was quizzed quite a bit about his head coach, and it sounds to me like there will not be a decision made on this head coach until after the season is over. As he said last week, and as he (laughs) said, I mean, really after the game, too, he said, I'm not even glancing into the long-term future. The future is this Sunday against the Eagles. That's all they're focused on right now. I don't know how many times he has to say it, but... I, I guess you know f- people feel the need. They got to ask. They got to ask when you've lost three games in a row and the expectations that this team has, right, Mick? Oh, absolutely. And you know, he also went on to say that you know they. I, I don't know if they thought they were trying to trip him up or nothing with that <laughs> philosophy question, that right? <laughs> and, and and he said, if I disagreed with Garrett's philosophy, he wouldn't be the coach. Yeah, that's <laughs> for the ten years. Yeah, I'm glad Mickey pointed that out. That was the one thing you know, if you kind of. Take uh, put it into a bow. That I think that's the the veteran reporter right there telling you that that that's that's the thing. Hey, if I didn't agree with his philosophy, if I didn't agree with how he managed the games, you know, I'm sure that Jerry is like a fan. You know, every fan's like, oh, go for it. No, don't go. And then it, you know, you you have that buyer's remorse when it doesn't work. But you know, yeah, I, I feel like though that the question, one of the better ones they asked, uh, was that. Hey, do you agree with his philosophy? Do you agree with him and how he manages the games? You, and he says, if I didn't agree with him, he wouldn't be the head coach. And so this is all up for evaluation at the end of the year. That's the, that's the way teams handle things. That's the way the Joneses handle things. Yeah, it was the one time. They clearly saw, and Mickey and Rob will tell you, that when Wade Phillips lost his team, the Joneses had had enough at that point. They needed to try and do something differently. I don't feel like that Jason Garrett has lost this team. Even though we've seen videos of guys walking by and supposedly not shaking his hand or you know whatever, but, I, I don't think that. Sometimes but, as a player, you walk off the field and you're just you just want to get to the bench and get a cup of Gatorade and you don't notice anything going on it was, around you. And it was two guys. Yeah, and, and yeah. they're not. And they now we're making a big deal coach. about that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, to me, at the end of the year, you <laughs> sit down and you evaluate 
where you're at with your coaching staff. You're either going to win enough or you're not going to win enough, and that's where the evaluation needs to be. He is without a contract. No one's ever asked Jason Garrett if he really wants to be here either. He might he might like be tired of this place too. You know, everybody's like, well, we're all tired of you. Well, maybe he's like, well, maybe I can go on and do something else. You know, his contract is up at the end of the year, so keep that in mind as well. You know, I we were talking about this yesterday off air. When's the last time in the National Football League you've seen a team make a coaching change with a franchise that's you in first say place? NFL, in, right? It, yeah, the okay. NFL okay. first place in their division. Okay, we. I mean, you've seen hockey or I, soccer. St. Louis Blues. <laughs> They'll shuffle coaches and managers yeah. in and out, but the NFL that just doesn't happen as. As bad as this stretch is, they still control what they want to do. What Doug Peterson said yesterday about his team is the same thing that Jason Garrett could say about his team. Now, Jason's not going to say those type. He's not going to come out and say that. I know Doug walked it back. Mm -hmm. That's not Jason's style, but the same thing holds true. They can still do what they want to do. People might say the Cleveland Browns last year when they made the switch, when they got rid of Hugh and then went and, and Greg Williams took over and things kind of shifted a little bit for them that way. Yeah, but they, 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 you're they, they played the better. was the last time a first-place team yeah, did that. A team that still is in control. And like oh, the, yeah. that, no, you did qualify yeah, that. You're yeah. absolutely what, right. Yeah. And to what Brian said, 2010, 45-7, you lose to the Packers. You right. get blown out by the Jaguars the week before. Wade Phillips, and we love him. He'd lost the team. The team had lost direction, and that's why they made the change. They're not going to do that here. It's a good thing this is a football town and not a hockey town because that guy would be fired <laughs> yeah. already, right? <laughs> the, uh, if you're not aware, yeah. most of you probably aren't aware, the Dallas Stars are 1-5-1 one, <laughs> and one to start the yeah, season. Yeah, bad start. For the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of here. Let's go. That that's, just in his what are you doing? Move but on. you know the other thing they asked him, if they, and they were trying to hint on the – the perception out there that the Cowboys aren't prepared to start a game, they're not motivated. And Jerry's answer to that, they wanted to know what he does on game day. He said, I think he's tremendously organized on game day. Yeah. So that shot down that uh, line of questioning also. Uh, so, yeah, and, and you know, and, and the weird thing is, okay, you don't have your team prepared to start the game, right? But – in 10 minutes at halftime, they come out playing like their hair is on fire. Yeah, much better. So, so what, 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 what? All of a sudden, you got organized. And was and, it was it last year they couldn't make halftime adjustments? Yeah, and now right. they can. Yeah, and and so, <laughs> by the way, I just I mean, saw yeah, this, no. and this is going to be interesting. I'm trying to see where I wrote it down. Um, the Eagles, their defense has been scored on on the first possession five of the last six games. Yeah. And the Cowboys don't score on those first possessions. So now something's going to give, right? Yeah. Something's going to happen. Uh -huh. Either one's not going to score or one's going to score. Uh, in, when, you, when you're – I'd be interested just to th a thought from everybody if I could. I kind of – on Twitter this morning, I kind of went a, the thought of a lack of offensive rhythm. You mentioned is it, it on the mailbag today too. Is that yeah. is that being too simplistic? Is I, that I, being? I'm with you on is that. It, I was is, thinking is, that last night. Is there is there ability, Mickey, to move the ball just so fine when you don't have? I mean, I'm not I'm not saying about the the, the players on the field, but even when they have the players on the field, even when they have their full complement of roster, is there is their margin of error so small? That it hurts them to have any kind of rhythm, and am I am I just making too much of something that probably isn't what it is? Well, if you look at the start of this past game, all right, the uh, the Jets came out and they were four and out. They got one first down on the on the first play, and then they went three and out. Right. The Cowboys went three and out. Then the Jets had a fourteen play scoring drive, right. And then the Cowboys end up going um, eight plays and kick a field goal. Right. So, and then the Jets went no score. The Cowboys went no score uh, thanks to, well, there was a holding penalty anyway. The Jets didn't score. And then the Cowboys, uh, or they should have scored, right? Fourth and two. Right. And then they score on one play. 
So it was very even to start the whole game saying, okay, they didn't – well, the Jets didn't start real well either. Hey, but, I mean, you can look at all of that, but look at the Dallas drives, okay? Look, the, the week before against Green Bay, there were a couple picks, right, that, right. that derailed possessions in the first half. Yeah. This time they weren't picks, but they were drops. Yeah. I mean, when you're sitting there at – the 32-yard line with a third and four, and there's a ball that clanks off Michael Gallup's hands. You're not moving the chains, and you're kicking the field, the 50-yard field goal. Next possession, which was early second quarter, they're sitting there second and 11, incomplete, off Gallup's hands. And and when I write drop with an exclamation point, that's a drop. Yeah, <laughs> I give them the benefit of the doubt. You usually. don't have to go to but pro football so, so, focus. So to... you wind up. Mm. So you wind up punting there. And and people don't want to hear about this, but the coach says we got to execute. You know, yeah. and that's execution there. You got to execute ball plays. To your point, I was thinking this. I think along the same lines as you. There's something about this offense that doesn't feel right, even when they're being productive. Okay, they came into this game with total offense, uh, leading the whole league yeah, the in total yards. yards. Yeah. Okay, but it, just something about it that doesn't seem to be. Uh, yeah, they hit on these plays, but what are the odds? Seven times out of ten, that you're going to hit on those plays. You know, it just seems like there's uh, there's a frantic. There's something about it that's not right to me. I don't know what it is. I think you're right, but that three and zero start, there was a there's a rhythm and there was a pace to their offense where they were kind of dictating things. And, sure. And we're not the first half. We're not seeing it, but I think everybody's right because what I wrote in the mailbag because we had this that question was asked to us on the website. It's it's a play here or there that's making the difference. Like Bill mentioned, the drops. There was a penalty by Tavon Austin in the yeah, first quarter. 15-yard play right there taken out of the book. Where they would have been in the red zone. We've seen Dak take a sack that knocks him out of field goal range. Like There's just been different things that have happened that have that have stopped drives. And and so I think you have to – you really just have to look at each individual situation, and it's hard to say, oh, it's one overarching thing. Oh, they're, they're flat or this or that. It is about execution to some degree. I mean, and and they just haven't done it for whatever reason consistently. The possession before the Jets drove down and made it twenty-one to three. Third and two, Jarwin has a drop. Yeah. It was a first down. Yeah, and, he, and you know, it, it gets knocked out of. Well, I don't know if it was a drop. The guy did a pretty Adams, good Adams, job. Yeah. Adams, yeah. Adams, yeah. getting yeah. that was close. It was but a contested you, ball. You were yeah. there, right? And, right. And, and and so then the next possession, they drive. You know, in what? Uh, 20 seconds? What was it? 20, yeah, I thought, I 27 thought. seconds, and they kick a field goal. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean. I, I was just trying to find out, you know, because people don't want to hear the execution part, but right. and, and they blame it on the coach. And, you know, the coach actually said that, you know, some of the things execution, he said it yesterday, you know, you can't put on the coach and staff. But I could say I kind of answered the question in a way of, is Tavon Austin lining up a coaching problem? Is the drops a coaching problem? You know, and I, I just, you know, I'm not trying to defend the coaches. I'm just saying they all have a hand at the uh, at what the problems are. But when you look for reasons, and when they use the word execution or lack of it, it it, it does. It applies to what they're trying to do here. You know, if if they if they're able to if they're able to catch these balls and make these throws and not mess up bail coverage, you know, on, and uncover three. If they do those things, then they then they they get the rhythm. Then they don't then they're not so inconsistent down at down at each I'm trying to say down after down on defense. Sometimes we see something really good on defense and then the next play is something really bad. And they have no consistent no rhythm on offense and then on defense they struggle from down to down sometimes. And I, you see you're trying to kind of figure out What's wrong? And then now throw in special teams. You have a field goal kicker that you know he lines up on the forty yard line to kick, and all of a sudden he doesn't make it, and now you have that problem. <laughs> and he lines up at the other team's and it, forty, and he and makes it, it. And he makes it, yeah. And so now you're struggling with that. And so to me, it's execution. It is, and it's just the inconsistency that they have on defense from down to down is a real issue here. You you, you can't get back to back plays from this defense. You know, when you need to get off the field, yeah. you just you mm-hmm. just you're you're holding your breath at like, okay, come on, come on, Quinn, come on, Lawrence, somebody get a sack here, somebody get some pressure, somebody, you know, and what you're having to rely on is maybe you're getting a good enough rush where they get a holding and it takes them back. 
Mm-hmm. That seems to be the one thing that's stopping teams from having any success against you. So, and here's the other thing that gets clouded when your defense is not playing well. Yeah. Their last seven possessions in the game, last seven possessions, they go down to the seven-yard line, right? Gamble and lose. Right. Okay? And then it's punt, field goal, field goal, miss field goal from 40, which right. you should make, touchdown, touchdown. Yeah. So... The offense moving the ball, but they get one play or one missed field goal, and it costs you 10 points, that, that, and you lose by two. It's a good point by Mickey. To me, Seven possessions, and they punted once. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is this is the situation you run into is when you miss a field goal. To me, that's like a turnover. Yep. I mean, that's a turnover. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's, you know, and then, so. Actually, two just turnovers like, if you count the, the, the fourth, fourth and two. two. Yep. You're right you about that. You turn the ball over. You're absolutely right about that. Mm-hmm. So, I, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I think we're all trying to help Joe and Flower Mound out there understand what the problem is. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to, but then when, you know, nobody wants to hear its execution. You know, yeah, coaching, sure. Players, sure. Front office, sure. You know, mm-hmm. broadcaster, Brian Broadus, sure. You know, I think we all kind of have a little bit of a, of a thought or of why, or trying to, trying to pin, or trying to pin it down. And when you say something that's pretty simplistic, People don't want to buy that. No, they just immediately want to say, "Nah, nah." It's who's, not. Who's, but, but what is the answer? Fault is it? Yeah. You know, that's what is the... the answer? What is the? And, and I think we're all trying to. You know, you're talking to football people here, and you know, Mickey and every. But we all talk to guys in this hallway, and you know, and we say, "Hey, what is?" And guys will tell you, "Hey, what I know, what I see is the things we're talking about here." But people don't want to buy that. They just don't. They just feel like, ah, oh, we'll just ah, get rid of the coach. Yeah, okay, get rid of the coach, sure. But how about the receiver that lined up wrong? How about the guy that Brian Bross talked about as 1A at wide receiver not stepping up and having a great game and helping you when your one receiver is down? As you he know? said, I had three balls slip right through my fingers. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that, you wonder why. You wonder why you lose games, and then it's right there for you. It's right there for you to see, but we don't want to accept that. We want to look at something else and say, no, nah, it's not that. It's not that, Brian. You're dumbass. It's not that. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but, there are plays to be made. And Jason Garrett, to your point, did say yesterday, anything that a player does or doesn't do, they were put in a situation by the coaching staff. Right. So that it starts there. But at the same time, there have been plays to be made in all of these three losses. I know they didn't put up any touchdowns against the Saints. They had an opportunity in the end zone early in the game there. Like they're Witten has a catch and run where they're in position maybe to get into a field goal at the very least. Like there there are opportunities for this offense. And it's fun. I mean, this game Sunday could be decided in the first quarter, first half, because the Eagles are in the same boat. Yeah. They gotten they've gotten shut out in the first quarter, I think, four times this year. So yeah. who can, oh no, their quarterback who, will he'll throw it wide. I mean, he'll throw it over their heads. Yeah, I mean, he'll zero, fu- zero game uh, coming so up. Who coming? doesn't dig so a this hole. game starts in the third quarter. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. See, and, that, yeah. and that's why Peterson said what he said. And and and, and I saw a column kind in, of in, the Phil- <laughs> in, in the Philadelphia Inquirer. Yeah. Is basically what he's saying is I still think we have a good team. Right. I still have confidence in my team. Right. It's not like I'm trying to brag that we're so much better than the Cowboys or anything. He's just trying to instill confidence in a team that, by the way, is three and three. That's uh, your and exact. Got, and got run out of Minneapolis. They look bad. They look bad playing in Minneapolis. I mean, if you watch yeah. that first quarter yeah. or first quarter and yeah. a half, the three big touchdown passes they had, are you kidding me? A, a team that was struggling with Kirk Cousins at quarterback and Tried all of a sudden fine. he looked like a Hall of Famer. And they ran the ball too much, by the way, and yeah. all of a sudden Rasul Douglas looks like me out there playing corner. I'll tell you what, no, I, you know what, Mickey, you probably backpedal better than him right now. Wow. Minnesota averaged 6.17 a play in that game, mm. and they were – Perfectly balanced, and I know that drives people mm. nuts. But they have 52% run, 47% pass. I know I didn't add the points, whatever, to it, but that's that's where they were at. They well, played that's... a perfect game when you start talking, and they pressured. They got after. They got after the quarterback. You can make. The, you can rattle this guy. I, if you can get guys around him, he will kind of throw balls just like just to throw them. I mean, he's the ball to the outside could be wide. You know, he sometimes he won't be accurate throwing the ball. He'll throw the ball high in the middle of the field. You know, they had some drops is too. That, is that who? Uh, 
Who are you talking about? Oh, I thought you talking about Dak. No, no I'm kidding. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, Dak can sometimes do that too. Yeah. But they had some drops. All Sean Jeffrey. I mean, they had some. You go back and watch them the Green Bay game. They had. They've had some drops, and they've had some problems on the offensive line too with protection. It's just the Cowboys have got to find a way to just put. A, if you just could put one game together, you know, if you just don't have things that you know that these stupid mistakes. You know the, the 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 turnovers. You know conversions on third down. You know that that seemed to be right against the Jets, but you're going to have to you're going to have to find a way to get after the Eagles' ass in this game. That well, that's going to be the key in this. This one. would be the week to put that one game together. Put it all together. Yeah. Yes. Eight 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 five five two two nine seven. The number to call when we come back here on Talking Cowboys. The most amazing stat through six games of this oh. season. Oh. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store and learn how to buy one smartphone and get a second one on us. Based on GWS One Score, September 2018. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel, Will McClay, and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broadus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys and with us you'll travel like a pro visit cowboystravel.com to book your travel package today work the Cowboys way and channel the winning business tradition of the Dallas Cowboys and the Jones family at formation this dynamic workspace provides an elevated work experience on the star's aspirational campus with exclusive membership options available to meet varying needs. Choose from open workspaces, dedicated desks, and private offices to leverage our home field advantage for your individual business success. Limited memberships are available now, so apply today at formationatthestar.com. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American made with pride right here in Texas. Respecting Cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Back to Talking Cowboys. Talking Cowboys continues and free to play predictive games in the Dallas Cowboys app are yours. You can win cash prizes up to a $10,000 grand prize. Fans must be 21 or older. Log in to play. Download the app for access on game days at dallascowboys.com slash app. I'm not going to lie, I didn't that, play this that, week. Well, that takes yeah. care of my Monday read. And you know, <laughs> and you know you've got to uh, keep playing. You can't just play. Yeah, at the yeah, yeah play. because the app yeah. doesn't really like you if I'm, you only yeah. play one quarter. I'm, I'm good for 10 points in that first quarter. Then other than that, I'm really not involved. Uh, for some much. reason, the Cowboys start playing this game at halftime. Halftime? <laughs> uh-huh. So I, I just go Fill ahead. with the rim shot. Yeah, Fast forward very, uh, very, on my predictions. That's very yeah. fair. And don't miss your chance to see the Cowboys live at 8. AT&T Stadium when they return home on Sunday, October 20th. That would be this coming Sunday to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Get your tickets now at DallasCowboys.com. It's Sunday night football this week. All right, the most amazing stat that I've seen, and uh, give proper credit if I can find it, Adam JT13. Okay, He Bob, figured it out himself? Bob, Bob Sturm uh, retweeted it. And said, this is an amazing stat, and I will agree. Through six games, the Cowboys remain the only team that has not started a single drive in the opponent's territory. The other 31 teams have started an average of 5.9 drives inside the opponent's territory. And four teams have started at least 10 drives through six games inside the opponent's territory. And the Cowboys have none. I would say New England would probably be the team that's leading that right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. That New England would be the team that started the most they've, drives. They've had drives that have finished in the end zone yeah. by pick yeah. sixes or exactly. scoops they, they, and they, they, scoops. They, they, well, let's double check this real quick. Uh oh, he's going to check. Mickey's going to check that stat. So, so and Jordan Lewis gets you, Twitter. and they have not. Yeah, I Jordan get Lewis yeah. gets you a pick, and he gets it right in the other in your own end zone, basically. Yeah. So you can't, as you of know. as of uh, last week, the Cowboys were 31st in the league in starting field position, their own 23 yard line. I mean, it's worse this week. So, so far, the closest they've been to midfield three times at the 46. Which you'll take that, but... But this gets back to, okay, the offense having to run more plays to matriculate down the football field, you're going to have more opportunities for a lack of execution. And it ties, it marries defense with offense. That's what makes football so great. Because you might be having all sorts of problems on football, but you can point a finger over to that defensive side and say, well, how come we haven't had any short fields? Yeah, Your average, basically the league average is you get one a game, and the Cowboys have had none in six games. But, but... The opponents only have two, starting yeah. in cowboy territory. There you go, there you go. So maybe uh, defend. There you go. That's a good that? stat. And good, those were there you go. those. Yeah, I would have never thought 52. to look it up. Well, but, but the other right part of that, it's not. It's not just takeaways though. It's how about a three and out? Or how okay. about a long yeah, punt return? Or how about yeah. a return? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Have, and ba- have, them, have them backed up to where they're punting from their own five yard line, and you get a ninety two yard pass. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that was the thought process. If you're going for it down That's there, right. you're That's thinking true. about yeah. At the least ball. you got the you're winning the field position but battle. You play if defense, you don't make it, play defense, That's make right. a punt from that end. That's you right. Know? That's yep. what you're thinking about. There. I would give up on punt returns. I'd rush the punter every time. Take and my chance. You might not because be even Were if you I get us in the fourth and two just now. What's that? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because yeah. that that's the. That's the silver lining if you don't make yeah, it. If you, right? if, you can, old, if, you, if you can hold them there, if you can get them to go three and out there, then you get the ball. Get the ball to 50-yard line. 50-yard line. It's yeah. the old hidden yardage that Bill Parcells used to talk used about. He used to talk about that a lot. They don't get much on a punt return. The only thing they get is a penalty. Might yeah. as well just try to block it. You know, Okay, if you hit the punter, so what? Just, you, know. you know what I saw? You talk about referees and penalties. And I don't want to go down the referee path again. They had a penalty. They called a, a holding on a Kickoff return when the ball went out of the when they kicked it out. Of the yeah, concert. I heard about that. How do you do that <laughs> on a touchback? On a touchback, they get a holding call on a touchback. Yeah. How do how do the officials? How do you call that? I, I don't know. I, I'll stop there. Well, even if you called it, I, I, you we, pick up the flag just, on that. Yeah, it, just, once it's a touch, no, no flag. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, just right. pick it up. Just yeah. pick it up. Yeah, right. absolutely. There. All right, let's go to Joe in Maryland. You're next up here on Talking Cowboys, Joe. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on again. Um, I just wanted to get you guys' thoughts on uh, Coach Garrett. Uh, I remember listening to Talking Cowboys back prior to the 2014 season, and I was uh, key in on every week with uh, uh, Brian trying to get our coach fired, which I was totally in agreement with. But yeah. at that time, he was on the hot seat. Yeah. So maybe him uh, being on the hot seat again is not necessarily a bad thing. But I also want to say that I think that Jason Garrett's an excellent talent evaluator. True. He's helped put together a, a great team, and I think he's kind of being the scapegoat here. Uh, I think there's deeper issues that's going on right now. Uh, I think the defense needs to be looked at, the defensive coordinator position. Um, and, I mean, I would hate to not give this guy, uh, even though he's had you know quite a long time, to get over the threshold, but I just don't think it's fair for him have us make it to the NFC Championship and then him, you know, that not be good enough if he does not and him lose his job. So yeah. I just wanted to get you guys' thoughts on Coach, and um, I'll hang up and listen. You've been very fair. You, you've been you've been a lot more fair than I have about that, and I'll admit that. Um, I think to me, though, I'm thinking about Coach, and we'll see what happens at the end of the day. You know, the Joneses are the ones that are going to have to, of course, make the decision. The contract's up. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to let this thing ride and see where it goes. You know, I don't think I was very fair to him, you know, early uh, in the last three or four years for sure. But I'm also concerned about did I misevaluate the talent on this roster? You know, that did I, did I overrate the talent on this roster? You didn't overrate it on offense. We may have made a mistake on defense. Yeah, I— but, Mickey, I just kind of feel like that, you know, I felt like that Van Der Esch, Smith make the big jump, that secondary yeah. plays better. You know, I, I don't I don't recognize the secondary right now. Mm-hmm. I don't. 
I don't recognize it, and I don't, I don't recognize the lack of a pass rush, a consistent pass rush. That might and, be the biggest thing. Yeah, you know, one one weekend we're fighting run defense, and the next weekend we're talking pass rush. But I, I don't recognize this this defense overall, and and I I love Rod Marinelli. He's one of the most honest guys in the world. You know, I went up to him and said, Coach, I'm sorry we're having to rip you about your defense. He says, it's part of what goes on, Brian. It's part. I, I appreciate his honesty. He's been at this a long time. There's something I should be, as an old man myself, I should learn from that. You know, But the, the thing about Coach, you know, give him this opportunity. I, I, it's, we're a quarter of the way through the season. If things don't work out, they don't work out. If he gets it done, then by all means, he earned it. He earned his extension. But I, 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 I want to take, just from my point of view, the thought is maybe that I overrated this roster overall, and that that in itself maybe they're not a maybe they're not a Super Bowl roster, maybe they're not an NFC Championship roster, maybe they're not a divisional roster. But I can't you know they're right in the thick of things because Philadelphia is just in the baddest shape as you are, you know. Yeah. So that's that's the thing that's the thing that when I go out jogging that bothers me the most is that I that I felt like that I might have misevaluated this roster. I'll, I'll let the coach. Do to take care of itself, but maybe the roster, uh, that's that's an issue. I don't right know there. if it's what you misevaluate though. If you just go by your eyes, like specifically, you talked about the defense, the way they played for the majority of last year. That's a young, talented group that did a lot of things well. Rams game was an, was an exception for sure, and then we go to training or, camp. Huh? I said or. Well, <laughs> there were there was a game or two in there. That Colts game was bad. Colts game that, too. That should have opened my eyes. But you go into training camp and you watch day after day this team go against each other in practice, and you see what this offense is capable of doing when they're healthy. How well does defense play every day in Oxnard when we watch them play? That's a team that that's a defense that was flying around, flying yeah. around secondary, making plays. I mean, there is talent on this team, but they have not been consistent. Uh, no question about it. But they but they played well for four games, with the exception of two drives at the end of two of them. Think about it. Yeah. You held the Saints to, and I know who was playing quarterback, but you held them to 13 points. But if you ask them, I mean, let's say, I, you know, I, oh, their I own know. standard, they're I know. two and four. I, I got you. You know, but but so, these last two games, I don't recognize that. I defense. don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't either. There's I, no pressure. Yeah, they're giving up big plays. Yeah, and not big plays. Big plays for touchdowns. Yeah, and and very few sacks. What are, where are they at at sacks? I right appreciate now? you and saying it, that, Mickey. Because that's, uh, that's not. I, I, I don't think – when they, when they sit down as a unit and, and Chris Richard I, I don't think Chris Richard has forgotten how to coach or, or Rod Marinelli. I, I think those guys are really two quality coaches, two coordinators that are outstanding. I, I feel like, though, that these guys have kind of let each other down. And, and, again, I feel bad that I came out and said, Leighton Vander Esch is this, Jalen Smith's this, Achito Awuzie is this, Xavier Woods is this, you know, Tank Lawrence is this. Boy, I'm glad they got – Mickey argued with me about how much would Robert Quinn really be uh, effective. You know, I think he's been okay, but Mickey's right too. I haven't – you know, one-on-one, he has got to win two sacks. Yeah, good, but, you know, how about some of the other games? How about some of those other – you know, how about the Packers game? How about, you know – how about a little bit more pressure from Tank Lawrence? And I'm not focusing on the fact of what Tank Lawrence makes, and I understand, but he's going to have some one-on-one opportunities. I was praising the, wor- the world of, of Malik Collins. Oh, Malik mm-hmm. Collins, he's up for contract, da-da-da-da-da. Malik Collins hasn't played will it nearly as well enough as he needs to be. And probably they drafted uh, uh, Hill because they worried about Malik Collins sure. leaving here. And, and then what has what is Hill done? Hill's Hill hasn't done the, anything. Yeah. So I mean, inactive it, in three games. I think that to me, the expectations that that were that maybe I set for this team were not realistic, and and that's that's what bothers me the most as I watch this defense play right now. That's what bothers me because, like I said, they are not consistent from down to down. They might get a stop, they get a two yard a tackle for loss, and then the next play it's second and twelve, and they give up like Mickey says a fifteen yard. See, that's pass. the thing. There were some chunk plays in this game. It's funny if you look at some of the stats post game. The Jets were two of ten on third down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And they couldn't run the ball. There yeah. were some good things in there, but then a ninety two yard touchdown happens. You but get when a bust. you don't get to third down because you're doing so well on first and second. Which yeah, is but that I one mean drive. two of ten. That, they, and, they, and well, two they, two drives, including the ninety two yarder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You okay. know, they, they gave up five plays of twenty four yards or more. And and they get two sacks, so now that's 
14 sacks for the season. Yeah. And I think that puts him on pace for 37. That is mediocre. And I think yeah. that's average. Two hits on Sam Darnold. Yeah, only. Yeah. So as that, your that, quarterback got hit and, eight and, times. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that was a deal where you're, you're in a situation where they're, where, and Mickey was very accurate about this, is talking about their offensive line was a mess. You know, their offensive line legitimately was a mess coming into this game, and you were not able to take advantage of guys moving around, playing other positions. I understand Sam Darnold was able to move around, but you just did not attack him in that pocket to affect the game the way it needed to be affected. You know, and if you want to, now if you want to put that on coaches for saying, hey, you've got to go out and take it to these guys, well, instead of let them taking it to you. That seemed like what happened that first half for me. And Jerry Jones sort of alluded to that, uh, the play up front on both sides of the ball in his interview this morning. More on that, and we'll have a call from Kevin from Ohio and Mickey's Read of the Day when we come back. It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the internet for answering your financial questions. Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. It's time for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. The OtterBox that builds those crazy protective phone cases? Yup, and now they're changing the side dish game with the OtterBox Trooper Soft Cooler. Lightweight, mobile, and leak-proof, Trooper is perfect for blitzing a crowded parking lot with a Frito pie. Amazing. Hey, you think I could fit my seven-layer salmon salad into the Trooper cooler? Yup, but please don't. And that's been Tailgating with the OtterBox Boys. Learn more about the Trooper Soft Coolers at otterbox.com. While a player could look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com slash football. Dr. Pepper is the one you crave. But how do you explain that craving? Imagine a surging river of ice cool Dr. Pepper roaring with carbonated mists of desire. You're dangling above it, upside down, like a fishing lure in the wind. 23 flavors tickle your nose, but the river is too far away to taste. Dr. Pepper calls to you. You, you. Now that is a Dr. Pepper craving. Dr. Pepper, the one you crave. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to Talking Cowboys. Okay, when you go to Jack Black, We've got product. Oh, wow. All right. That's a good So if you go to Jack Black, we know all about the facial cleanser right here, okay? Got it? Got it. All right. <laughs> That's a Des Bryant box. This is show and tell. We love <laughs> the beard lube, correct? Yes. Okay. Nick, I hope you're handing this out at the end of the day. We love Turbo Wash. There you yes, go. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm out. Wait, there's more. This is an endless box. We also love... The double duty face moisturizer, and then not last but not least, the lip balm. All okay? right. Okay. Damn, Mickey, way and to go. It's thanks. Like, it's like QVC. No, wait. So I want to see the box. I want the box. Is is Des now promoting this? Is this an endorsement deal for Des? And thanks to Taylor Hooker. <laughs> yeah. This has got Brian Broaddus' name on it. All right. right. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Mickey, for doing this. I appreciate you. (laughs) This one has Rod Phillips' name on it. Thank you, Mickey. All right. Now, this one has Jones, and I don't know if that's for Jerry's birthday. No, it's probably Jerry. I'll I'll give it to Jerry. Mickey, thank you for that. I appreciate that. So there you 
go. Wow. That's what happens when you go to getjackblack.com. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's what happens wow. when you subject yourself to big words. You get free product. <laughs> Good for you, Mickey. Thank you. Go. Thank you for doing that. That's I'm very glad nice. to see Des has that endorsement deal. Yes, too. absolutely. Yeah, it's a good yeah. gift box. I needed something to carry it in. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, very good. On Jack that Black note, has been consistent. That's something we haven't had to right. worry about. We, Jack that's right. Black, yeah. They deliver. They, they score in the first <laughs> half as well as the they second are good. half. They are good. At least we'll have clean faces here. Yes. All right, Kevin in Ohio, you're next up on Talking Cowboys. Kevin. Hey, thanks, guys, for having me. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for everything you guys do. Appreciate My that. question is, I know we um, all week you hear about the next man up. Coach says it all the time. I don't want to really talk about that. I want to talk about the guys that are, are up. I mean, um, and, and let's start with our defense. I mean, uh, where's Lawrence been? Um, sure. What about um, Vanavesh? Vanavesh has been, you know, he had 10 tackles, but Smith, and you guys could correct me if I'm wrong after I hang up, but I believe he only had three in the Jets games. Um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the most important thing to me this week is, is you guys can help me if our left, both tough tackles will be back. So poor um, Dak. Um, is standing up right, not on his butt all the whole game. Sure. Um, you know, people talk about Dak Prescott, you know, and I'll, I'll give him two words. If that, you don't think that's a tough quarterback, um, just go watch that Jets game. It pretty much tells the tale in that game right yeah. there. Yeah. But, um, uh, Mick, this is to you, though. Uh, do you see us bringing anybody in um, over the bye week, especially like a kicking? Um, or do you don't see anybody out there that's uh, worthwhile to, um, to replace um, Mara? How's, I'll let you guys go. Wait, wait, wait. How's your oh, okay. How's your right leg? My, <laughs> not that good. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. I, you been I mean, checking out that kicking carousel out there? Yeah, Cody Mickey? Parkey was the last kicker Tennessee. signed off the free agent heap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mike Nugent was before that. And Mike that. Nugent, how yeah. old's he? He's still kicking in New England. Now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. He was, yeah. he was, he was just prior to Parky, Nugent was signed yeah. by New England. There's so not that's a lot of out kickers there. out there. Matt Bryant signed with Atlanta in, in August, and he's 46 years they old. Missed, didn't they, they lose the extra game? Point. Missed extra yeah, point. Missed they extra lost extra the game? Point. <laughs> you know, it, it, in Arizona. My, my answer to you is scored touchdowns. Matt, and he may be released soon. They're yeah. one and five. He, he along with the coach. I don't, He's older than the coach, isn't he? Yeah. Matt Bryant, probably. I'm not Dan sure. Bryant. I'm not sure you can make a trade to match what happened last year to make a significant difference on this team. You know, maybe and Steven kind of spoke to it yesterday. They just like want to get some guys healthy. Fifth or sixth round pick, somewhere fourth. I don't know, but how good's that guy going to be? Like Snacks Harrison move, but is that the type of player? Remember last year, Detroit picked him up. Uh, oh, I, I like it. Yeah. yeah, you know, from the Giants, the Giants were having a fire sale a little bit, and they gave Snacks up for a, a fifth round pick. You know, I know that Alex Loomis and Henry Shroka and all those guys are working hard on trying to kind of figure some things out. And uh, now the Jets supposedly are going to have some sort of fire sale, or here. maybe not. Yeah, well, they got New England this week. So they might they, change they, their they mind could, if they don't beat New England. They're one in five. Yeah, I you know I, I think that you have to Leonard try. Williams. I think you have to try and take advantage of some situations if you can absolutely do that. Uh, need to kind of get with those guys and see if there's a, a player or two that they have in mind that maybe I can look at as well. And, but uh, as far as I, I'm, I'm not banking. Mickey, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I'm not banking on these offensive tackles being available this oh, week. Oh, he asked that. Uh, yeah. The best you would do is get one of the two. Yeah. And that would be Tyron. Yeah. But I don't know about that. It, it sounds like mm. to me too the the that the, workout the, didn't go so well yeah, Sunday. The workout didn't go well, and then also too they they've got some big concerns about uh, Amari Cooper's quad as well. And so that's a, a bruise there. That's and the uh, way Jason answered the question about Anthony Brown, I don't know that he's yeah, back. That's yeah, a, that's another one. Lyle too. Collins told us he's feeling better, but it's a, it's an MCL. Of and course, it, it he ta- feels it takes, better. It takes a couple weeks, you know. So we'll see if he can do anything yeah. this week. The bye week's coming at a good time. In uh, one respect, but in the other respect, you need these guys to go win this game on Sunday. You needed yeah. the bye week you know. before the Philadelphia game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, and, and you know, Cobb's another thing. If if he can just get back, then you've got he can be the second wide receiver mm-hmm. with Gallup. Yeah. yeah, but now the way and the, can, yeah. the way they played it, it yeah. ended up being Tavon, and then at times they had to bring in Ventel Bryant. Yeah, like had, Smith that was his first time to. he'd played in the NFL. That's true. You had two guys playing for the first time in the NFL. Well, second time for Brandon Knight. He played a quarter and a half. Yeah, I would. I would if you can get Cobb back out there. I saw Mick, your old buddy, uh, number thirty-eight on the field for the Eagles. 
Orlando Scandrick playing oh, yeah. some nickel stuff. He's playing 38, huh? Yeah, he's Jeff over 38. Heath. So, yeah, if uh, if you can find a Maybe way. Maybe he and Jeff Heath can exchange jerseys uh, after yeah, the Yeah, we'll game. see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, th- to me. <laughs> or don't leave Heath in single high coverage. Put yeah. Woods back there. I wonder if they if they keep Rasheel Douglas on the field. I know we'll get into these guys tomorrow. Man, if you don't attack him, then by all means – Change the coaches out. I'm just, <laughs> I don't. I mean that tongue in cheek. But it to me, it's they've got some issues in the secondary. You just got to find a way to protect. You just got to find a way to protect. So and in the maybe scouting be, report, they put a picture of Rasul Douglas, but they replace it with Mickey Spagnola's picture. You That's know, right? I, I, I could have done as well. Mickey, as Mickey, yeah. Yeah. Mickey could backpedal just as good. <laughs> All right. We backpedaled our way through another edition of Talking Cowboys and, and with product. That's yeah, right. Thank, thank you, you very much, Thanks. Mickey. Thanks, uh, Jack Black, for helping us out. Yes, here, thank you, Jack Black. And we will see you again tomorrow here on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?